Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. In this video, we're going to explore numbers in other bases. Now, we are familiar with the whole numbers that we generally use, uh, also known as Hindu Arabic numerals. Those numbers form what we call a base 10 system. And the idea of base 10 is that whenever you gather 10 of anything, you put them into a group. So the big idea is you have groups of 10. And the place values represent groups of 10 as well. So if, if every time you count 10 of something, you put them into a group, the only digits that you need for base 10 are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Base 10, groups of 10, count these and you'll see that there are 10 digits. Zero counts as one of them and then you go one through nine. As soon as you hit 10, that's one group of 10 and no units. So base 10 is built on groups of 10 and having 10 digits. It's pretty obvious historically why we ended up with the base 10 system. We all have 10 fingers. And when we learn to count in elementary school, whether it is now or whether it was 5,000 years ago, uh, we tend to count on our fingers, one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. So base 10 makes a lot of sense. If we as humans had three fingers on each hand, like a three-toed sloth does, we might have gone with a base six system. We could have actually picked any base that we want. We're going to explore a couple possible bases that we could have, like base three. That's where I'm going to start, and then we'll look at some other things. And you might say, well, why on earth would we care about looking at other bases? No one works in other bases. Well, in fact, they do. Much of computer science is based on base two numbers or base eight numbers or base 16 numbers, which can be explored later, which we probably will do. So first of all, it's not true that, that we only use base 10. Second of all, even if we don't really need our students to understand bases other than base 10, what they are, what studying other bases is good for, for us as potential teachers, is it helps us to really delve into the, the subtle nuances of how bases work and how place value work, work. There are a lot of things that we more or less take for granted um, and then our students who are seeing, seeing base numbers for the first time, they have difficulties with things. We can't we don't always empathize with their issues because for us, it's second nature. Well, learn a different base and you suddenly are back in the very seat that your elementary school kids are in and uh, struggling with many of the same issues. So uh, I hope you've seen the video I created use, using base 10 blocks. We're going to explore some base three blocks. Now these are not commercially available, but as you can see, it's easy to make little blocks out of cardstock. And I have here some units. And in base three, instead of every time you get 10 of something, you make a long. In base three, anytime you get three of something, you replace that with a long. So I have units and I have longs that consist of three units. And then whenever I get to three units, that's one too many, I can replace those with the flat. And I can get very definitely the sense of place value. So keeping this very high end and very kinesthetic to begin with, I am going to count numbers in base three. So I'm going to count. And I'm going to do this by looking at manip manipulatives and making a chart. In my chart, I'm going to keep track of how many flats, how many longs, and how many units. I'm going to start with one unit and look at this as a picture. And then in the end, we're going to come up with what we're going to call a base 
three number for each case. So let me come over here and start. So if I'm counting units one by one, the first thing I would have would be one single unit. I will write that as one unit and I have no longs and no flats, that's it. Add one unit and now I have two units. Add one more unit and I don't wanna say that I have three units. I want to replace those three units with a long. So the next number in the system would consist of one long. And when I have smaller units than longs, I wanna indicate that with a zero if I'm not using any. So the next number in line would have one unit and one long and no unit. Then I count some more. If I bring in one more unit, I'll have one unit and one long. I'm going to make this longer here. And then I can bring in one more unit and I'll have one long and two units. And then I would not say that I've got one long and three units. As soon as I got three more units, I would create another long. And I would be exchanging those, so no more units. I would have two longs and no units, followed by two longs and one unit, followed by the need to make a new chart. So give me half a second here. And we'll put all this together later. Again, flats, longs, units, and then we're going to come up with the base three number. So reminding myself where I left off, the last thing we had was two longs and a unit. I would bring in one more unit, and that would give me two longs and two units. As soon as I get one more unit, I'd say, oh, wait, as soon as I get three of anything, I do a trade. So those three units are traded off for a long. But actually, I would not say that the next number is three longs because, again, the idea of place value is whenever you have that, whatever the base is, in this case, three, whenever you have three of something, you replace it with something larger. So I would not refer to this as three longs. Instead, I'd replace those longs with a flat. And so the next number really should be represented as one flat, no longs, no units, like that. Then I can bring in another unit, one, zero, one, one flat, no longs, no units, another unit, one flat, no longs, two units, bring in another one, and I've created a long, I should create a long, one flat, one long, no units. I hope that is all making sense. And then bring in another unit. So I'm just adding a unit each time, one flat, one long, one unit. And just make that a little bit longer, keep adding. Bring in another one, one flat, one long, two units. And when I bring in another one, I will replace those three units with a long. One flat, two longs, no units. Bring in a unit, one flat, two longs, one unit. Bring in another one, whoops, not two, don't cheat. One flat, two longs, two units, and if I bring in one more unit, I'd say, okay, those three units need to be replaced by a long, but those three longs need to be replaced by a flat. So the next number, oh, I'll squeeze this in right down here. Two flats, no longs, no units. Now, every line that I've just created is really a base three number. In base three, 
the first number when you count would be one. And we generally write in the word little, the little word three is like a subscript to remind ourselves we're not dealing with base 10, we're dealing with base three. The next digit, the next number in base three would be two in base three. But the number after that is not three in base three. We would say it's one zero, or we can go ahead and call it 10. Our counting is one, two, 10. That would be one long and no units, followed by one long and one unit. So one, two, 10, 11, 12. And you can see that the numbers come straight out of the chart. Two longs and no units comes next. Two longs and one unit. So we go one, two, 10, 11, 12, 20, 21. And some people uh, will be a little leery about using that language of, of, of base 10 place value. So they might just say two, one base three. Uh, I don't really think it's so bad. But continuing to count, we would count 22 in base three. And the number after 22 would be 100. Because when you have two longs and two units and you bring in one more unit, that unit will make one more long, but that long will make a flat. 101, 102, 110. One one one, one hundred eleven. One one two, one two zero. One two one, one two two, and two zero zero. Now, if we can associate that with base 10 numbers. We started with one digit, one, one square rather, and we kept adding. So this is equivalent in base 10 to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So that is how you count in base three. Now, Using those manipulatives to get a sense of how base three works, I want to notice something that if you're in base three, the only did well, first of all, everything is created in groups of three. So whenever you get three of anything, you replace it with the next size up. The digits you use, if you look at all these different numbers that we had, the only digits we ever end up using are zero, one, and two. Because if you have more than two of anything, as soon as you hit three, you go to another place value. So in base three, you have groups of three and the digits you use are only zero, one, and two. If you go back to thinking about base 10, the digits you use are zero through nine. In base three, it's zero to two. This highest digit that you use is one less than the base. You can explore other bases using manipulatives like these as well, or you can see if you can just do it in your head by going into higher bases from here. So what if we had, for example, base five, and we wanted to count in base five? Well, let's talk about some things. So first of all, to kind of compare this with base three, in base five, as soon as you got a group of five of something, you would combine them. So we have groups of five. And the digits I think we're going to end up using would be the digits from zero up through four. Again, one less than the place value. That's a total of four digits. Like this is a total of three digits, but it's not one through five, it's zero through four. So let's say you're counting, and I want to count in terms of, I want to think in terms of units, longs, and flats while we count. 
and it will get me the numbers that I'm thinking of. So if I start by counting, I would first of all start with one unit and then two and then three and then four. But as soon as I hit four units, I want, as soon as I hit five units, sorry, I want to replace those five units with a long and I'd have no units left. And then I'd add another unit. One, 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 two, one, three, one, four. And uh, let me start another sheet here. We'll bring that one back in a bit. Again, think flats, longs, units. We were left off at one, four. The next one would not be one, five. Because when we add more unit, one more unit to one four, we would then have five units that should go together to create a long. So you have two longs and no units. Two, one, two, 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 three. Two, four, and not two, five, but three, zero. So that's how you would count in base five. Um, all of these pictures become numbers. And that's actually kind of the beautiful thing about thinking of, in terms of units, longs, and flats, because each one of these simply creates a number. This is one, and we would say we're in base five. We write out the base in words, two base five, three base five, four base five, followed by 10 base five and so on and so forth from there. So as we go along, we can explore other bases, but the manipulatives are the key, the idea of exchanging out whenever you get a group of whatever size the base is, and knowing that the digits that you're going to use are zero up through one less than the base that you have. So I hope that's helpful. This will take some getting used to, but remember, this is what your kids are going through when they're learning how to understand base 10 numbers for the first time. So we're all in the same boat.